And we must get it clear, therefore, that when we build an edifice like this, what we have done is to have built a sanctuary, a center of fellowship for the name of the Lord, for his name. Well, we can say this is the house of God, but the way, the motive, the understanding we have of it must be very clear. And not to begin to substitute this building for God. It is a place for the name of the Lord. That understanding must be very clear in our minds. Very clear in our minds. Very clear in our minds. Number two. God's people must understand. Something basic about the sanctuaries we build for God's name. Number two, God's house will be filled with glory only as God's presence is in it. First, we must understand what it means to build a house for God. But number two, God's people must understand that God's house will only be filled with the glory of the Lord as long as God is in that place. And the fact that the building is there does not mean that God is in that place. Listen. When the children of Israel were taken to the land of Babylon, God one time came to Ezekiel and said, oh, Ezekiel, let me take you to the sanctuary of God. And I want to show you what is happening there in the sanctuary. And he took him in a vision into the sanctuary. And he went into the inner court of the sanctuary. And he saw people, wizard, performing wizardry. And performing all kinds of, of worship of the sun and worship of the moon. And God said, have you seen it? Let me take you to another department. See what they are doing there. See what they are doing there. And God specifically said, He said, they have driven me out of the temple. May we not drive God out of this place. Old. Are you still with me? So important. Yes, we have built this place. It's beautiful. For gospel faith mission. For our God. So that people will come in here and be saved. So that people will come in here and know God. Is the house built in the name of the Lord. But we got to understand that this house God says the latter house, the glory of the latter house shall be more than the former. But for the glory of the latter house or for the glory to be in the house at any time God himself must be there. If God is not there, the glory is not there. So, in all our churches, may God be there with us. But I say to our members many times, I say, look, we thank God. You know some people when you are building a church, oh, they say, ah, you see, well, now that you are building this church, people are not coming. Because when they come now, they will say, we will ask for money. So that is why they are not coming. But when we build our church, when our church is ready, they will come. So you are making a mistake. Don't ever think that way. Yes, some people may come. I say, oh, so there's a nice place here. Yeah, all right. You know, Mr. President wants to come to this town. He sees a sanctuary that is very beautiful. In fact, people will not take him to a sanctuary that's not beautiful. People will look for a sanctuary that is beautiful. Alright? So, Mr. President will come to that sanctuary. People will flock into the sanctuary with Mr. President. But Mr. President does not worship there all the time. So, the following week, Mr. President is not there. The place returns back to his place. Now, other people who come from America, those who come from London, you see, they go around town. When they come, they have come for wedding. They want to have marriage. They begin to look for sanctuaries that are beautiful. For wedding, all right. Then they look for. Then 
they see if they see anyone that is beautiful they will have their wedding there after their wedding they go what does that mean that is not the church that is not the church but if god is in that place and we stand in this sanctuary in the name of the lord people will troop him they will troop him they will troop him not to dictate to us how we should serve God, but to know how to serve God. So, I've said to you, number one, we ought to understand what it means to have a house for God here on earth. Number two, I've said to you, what did I say? A God's house will be filled with the glory of God only when God is what? Is present. Number three. God himself is the only one that can fill his house with glory. God himself is the only one who can fill his house with glory? You see, we are human beings. And in God's wisdom, his works are perfect. I, I, I was always thinking that it were possible. If, if, it were, if it were to be the way I would have thought, I would say, I should not have this flesh. Or if I have this flesh, let this flesh be inside me and let my spirit be outside. Because, you see, I have this flesh. And this flesh works with this world. There is that pull all the time for me to think about the world. And the Bible teaches that the only way I can get myself out is to therefore endeavor with God's help to bring out the spirit and let my spirit be the one that is leading me. The Bible says that now there is no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the what? The spirit. Oh why? So I will have wished that I don't have flesh at all. But we are in the flesh. At least for now. That wise, you see all these blocks and sand and all this is this flesh. Because when God created us, the Bible says He made us out of the dust of the earth. It was only when He breathed into us that we became what? Living soul. It was only when He did that. And He said to us, that we should not eat the fruit of that tree. We disobeyed him. We ate that fruit. And that became our problem until he sent Jesus Christ. Now what is Jesus trying to do? Jesus has come to save us. And when now that he has come to save us, he is now he is giving us the spirit so that we, we will do less of the business of the flesh because the tendency is always there for man to think that this thing that is there now is because of what I have done and that goes for virtually everything oh you see our church is beautiful because of that people will come you are missing it oh Thank God, God may cause this church and the gallery every Sunday, everywhere is filled up. And somebody will say, why won't they come to this church, by the way? Why won't they come to this church? Why won't they come to this church? Is there any better church in gospel faith mission where they should go other than this place? We miss it. That was the problem of Nebuchadnezzar. The Bible says, with all the warning, the man, and I'm warning now, please forgive me. 
if it is not anything right for you. But then, that, this is just the message that God gave to me. The man, with all the warnings, stood by his balcony and looked at Babylon. And he said, this is this great Babylon that I have built by my power. You know, if you see the punishment given to him, it was a straightforward punishment. From now, you will receive the heart of an animal. And you begin to walk like an animal. And listen, when he began to walk like an animal, something was happening. The dew of heaven was falling on him. You see, many times we look at Nebuchadnezzar's case and see so much of the fact that he was changed and turned to the heart of an animal. But that was not the real thing. God is a merciful God. God doesn't want the sinner to be destroyed. For me, the most important thing in that account is the dew of heaven that was falling on him. And the Bible says over seven times. Maybe that is seven years. Maybe there is seven figure. But one thing that is complete, that is certain that I see is that the dew of heaven fell on him unto a complete point. Unto a point when he came into realization that the God of heaven ruleth over the affairs of men. And he can decide which way to go. Ladies and gentlemen. God will decide to bring people here. Yeah. As soon as we can continue to realize that, God has no problem. All the glory must be to the Lord. For he is worthy of the praise, worthy of the praise. No man or man should give glory to himself. Oh, all the glory must be to the Lord. Thank you. Please sit down. You know, this is just number three. All right? I have one more. But before I leave number three, what I'm saying here is God is the one God is the one that fills his house with glory the context of our text in Agai chapter 2 says for thus says the Lord reading from verse 6 for thus says the Lord of hosts yet once it is a little while and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land and I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come and I will fill this house with glory says the Lord of hosts it's God it's the Lord who fills the temple who fills the house of God it is, it is the Lord that fills the house with glory therefore whatever success we may be having at any point in time Thank God for what God has helped us to do. May we turn all the glory back to God. May we not share that glory. May we not dissipate it among ourselves. May we not say, ah, you know, you know, some people become so, I mean, say, well, I'm going to leave this church. Why do you want to leave this church? You say, they don't even recognize all that we do. They don't even recognize all that we do. You want people to recognize all you do? After people have recognized all you do, you have gotten your reward. You have gotten all your reward because they recognize all that you do. What do you want God to do again? Give all the glory to God. Number four and the last. Can you remember, remind me what is number one? Understand it understand it. Number two. And number three. 
He's the one who fills the house. Number four. Number four. Number four could have been a whole message, but I, I just trying to keep a little bit to the time. Alright? Number four is that God's plan from the onset has been to dwell among men and not necessarily in houses of cedar. God from the very beginning God is happy to see us have edifice like this. God is happy and his name is glorified when we do good things in his name. But beloved brothers and sisters, God has a plan and a specification. And he started with it and he's going to end with it. The devil cannot stop it. Hear me. The plan of God it's not necessary to dwell in four walls. Kept somewhere. No. The plan of God is to dwell amongst men. Dwell inside of men. The heart of men is the compartment which is called the temple of God. Hear me. I say to us, and I've said it, when Uzziah touched that ark, God struck him dead. Because there is a development going on. When God created Adam and Eve, what did he do? He put them into a garden. And from the revelation of scriptures, we discover that God was always coming to have fellowship with them. Until they sinned. And Adam missed that fellowship because we are told that in Genesis chapter 3 verse 8 that and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden hear that and God has to be searching for them as it were in the voice of men God was searching for them. was it that God didn't see them God already knew where they were and God has to say, Adam, Adam, where are thou? Why was Adam lost? And you know it. I perhaps believe that you know it. That when God eventually spoke to them, God set in motion a dwelling place plan. God used to come and have fellowship. Now it was difficult for God to have that fellowship. And you know God said, Satan, from today, the seed of man is going to bruise your head. And you are going to struck at his feet, but he will bruise your head. All the things were said about the woman, about the man, which clearly shows to a man that the state in which we are today is not the final, we are not the final product yet. And along the line, there was this developmental revelation how to come back to God. The building of altar by Abraham. If you read the accounts in Genesis, you will find that Abraham got to a place and he built an altar. And he worshipped God. God would just show forth and he worshipped God. 
have it will go for a time and then build an altar somewhere and it will worship God. Jacob got to Bethel on his way to Panorama and he built an altar and God asked him, go back to that place again. Altar was located. Altar was a location. And that frame of mind was what they had. And the best God could help them do at that point was to show to Moses on the mount a pattern and ask him to build an, an, a, 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 a tabernacle in the wilderness where they will have a third compartment where God himself will be represented in the ark. God was working out a process. You know that those of you who have been to Israel, you will know that even with the demolished sanctuary of Solomon, if they take you, those guides, if they take you there, they don't allow you to step into the part of the sanctuary. They don't. They don't. Why? Because for them, they still have the memory of a God that is localized inside an inner temple. And so God works with people. You see, the much we understand, if we don't understand, the level we have our understanding. When God tells me, I'm going to hold you by my hand, is God having a hand? I don't know whether God has a hand. I don't know. Maybe he has. But God is speaking using hand because I, ha I know hand. Because he's speaking to me by what I know. If I grow to the level that I understand we can pick something else without hand, God will deal with me at that level. So, we see that because the original plan of God was to fellowship with man, there was that evolutionary development gradually coming from the altar into the tabernacle, into the main temple, and so they kept on going. And when they came back from Babylon, they wanted to do the same temple. And they were only seeing the picture of the temple in the context of magnificent beauty. And they were building it. And when the older men who saw it, the first one, saw this one, ah, this, the beauty is not there now. The beauty is not there now. And God said, you are making a mistake. You are still looking at this beauty. So with all your 70 years in Babylon, you have not learned that the temple worship inside this place that you are putting sacredness is not the thing. I sent you to Babylon that you may know that when you are there, you can begin to pitch synagogue from places to places. Ladies and gentlemen, by the time Jesus actually came in the then Roman Empire, there were synagogues all over the place. When Paul and Silas and others began to go out, where were they preaching? Synagogue. But it took God time to remove the idea of a wall temple. When they were in Babylon, when Daniel wants to pray, he must face the temple. That tells you the psyche, the understanding. If we make mistake now, some members of this church, they will say, when they are in London, they will say, our church in Lekki, hear me, oh God, because of our church in Lekki. And they begin to ask, where is the direction of our church in Lekki? Is somebody still hearing me? And so when Jesus eventually came, in that developmental process, the Bible says when he gave up the ghosts on the cross, that veil, thick veil in the temple, tore from top to bottom. And the holies of holies was open. And I tell you, by the time the holies of holies was open, almost everything in the holies of holies was actually lost. But you know the only thing that was remaining? The world. Brothers and sisters. And you know, I believe the reason the word was what was left. The word is what you can carry in your heart and go to America. You can carry it in your heart and go to Russia. You can carry it in your heart and go, just carry it in your heart. 
So by the time Jesus came and he died, the Bible says Jesus, when he cried again with a loud voice and yielded up the ghost, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent twin from top to bottom, and the earth did quake. So when they were crying as to the foundation of this new temple, God was telling them, you don't know what I'm teaching you. The glory of this latter temple will be more than the former. Will be more than the former. And I will imagine that many will be saying, hey, we can't glory, look at this thing. Look, you know when, they, when Solomon was building, when Solomon, when Solomon was building in those days, you don't, you don't hear the sound of a hammer. You don't hear it. Everything is fixed up. The foundation is gold. And now you are building with liver. Ah, and you are telling us that the glory of this one. God said to them, listen to me. A time will come when the desire of all nations a time comes when the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory at that time. So when Jesus came and the temple veil was torn to twin to save our time, Peter, in one of his writings, has this to say. It says in First Peter chapter one from verse ten. Of which salvation the prophets inquired and sought diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that shall follow. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent from heaven and which things the angels desire to look upon. Ladies and gentlemen, I normally hear a lot of people they say, ah, in those days, the church of those days. The church of those days. Me, I don't believe in that too. I know that the church is getting better. The church, is, the world is getting very bad though. In the world, the world is getting very bad. But the rich church, I'm not saying everybody who comes to church, you, I mean the church. The church. The church are the people that are saved by grace. For the Bible says, to whom God will make known what is this riches of his glory that he's talking about. To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is Christ in you that is the hope of glory. When God says, I'm going to fill this place with glory, it is what referring to the fact that you will carry glory. You will carry glory. You will carry glory. You will carry glory. All of us will be glory carriers. All over the world today, we, we see glory carriers. Not in one sanctuary. Go to apostolate faith, you see big sanctuary. Go to many other places, you see big sanctuary. You have big sanctuary. First we have some big sanctuary. Redeem, redeem my land. They want to build another altar. They want to build another altar for worship. That will be three miles, no, three kilometers. Wow. You know what three kilometers is in a building? Huh? And more will still come. All of the 
all over the world where people who are glory carriers the fathers were crying if they had known what God has prepared for those who love him they wouldn't have been crying so ladies and gentlemen what I'm saying to you is this Christ in us is our hope of the glory and what Christ did was to make you and I to become the temple of the living God. Say, know ye not that ye are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwelleth in you. You are the temple. You are the temple. In other words, we don't, we don't, we don't carry it too much. I begin to say, eh, if you can come to our church, our church is a very fine place. So. No, 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 no. You should, you should say, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. The Bible says, let your light so shine before men eh? that they may see your good work and do what? And glorify. If all of us begin to glorify him, if all of us begin to radiate his glory, oh my God, it's better than the temple of Solomon. Let us rise up on our feet. All the glory must be to the Lord, to the Lord. for He is worthy of us. Let He's everybody sing it all right. shall be his people 
and God himself shall be with them and be their God and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes when the glory of God comes tears are gone glory means joy exquisite delight beauty splendor that is glory and you know what one thing I like God to do from time to time what he's saying is going to happen ultimately. By faith, if you believe it now, you get it. There, the Bible talks of a time when there shall be no death again. But Enoch, back then, refused to die. The Bible says, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not die. If somebody is here today and you are already weeping, I say the glory of God is here to wipe away your tears. I don't see God using cutlass to cut. But I see God do one thing. Speak. He called the things that are not as if they are. He called those things that are not as if they were. If somebody is crying here right now, I say let your tears be wiped away. That's what I see. And God shall wipe away all tears. And that is interesting. Not just one tears. In other words, everybody that is having tears right away here today, God can wipe away all their tears. And there shall be no more death. Somebody will say, what does that mean? I will not still die. Because Jesus says, whosoever believeth on me shall never die. So everyone shall never, never die again. No death again. Neither shall there be any more pain. So the sick can be healed right here. I don't have all the time. Otherwise, I will call for the sick. I will call for those who are, who are having tears. I will call for those who are in fear of death. Because we say the glory of the latter house shall be better than the former. But even without time, where you are, close your eyes and say, God, wipe away my tears. Wipe away my tears. Take away my sorrows. Wipe away my sorrows. Let the former things in my life. He said, for the former things are pass away. Let the former things pass away in my life. Oh, brother, sister, let's open our mouth and pray a moment to God. I say, God, wipe away my tears. Oh, God, bring an end to my sorrow. Oh, God, let death pass over me. Let the former things pass away. Let me radiate your glory. 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 God is building a people of power. God is building a people of praise. Who will go and radiate the glory of the Almighty God. Glory. 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 A holy nation of peculiar people that you should show forth the praise of him that has called you out of darkness into this marvel. Call the name of the Lord and say, Let weeping go, let weeping tears go out of my life. Everything that makes you sorrow and the dedication of this temple, let it disappear. Let weeping cease. 
let God wipe away all your sorrows. Let your tears come to an end. Let death pass over you. With long life, he says, I will satisfy you. He said, there shall be no more crying. And there shall be no pain. As for it, he said, he that accept receive it. He that seek it, find it. He that look at the door shall be open. As for me, that this time, even this message, oh, don't say this is just a dedication. God is here. His presence makes the difference. It is His presence that makes for a temple. It is His presence that makes for His house. If He's out of the house, there's no glory. God is here this time. Reach out unto the Lord. Reach out unto the Lord. Reach out unto him. I perceive in my spirit that the Lord is passing by here. Reach out to the Lord. God will fill this house with his glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I know the time is up, but let me let me not do without. God's will. My asking today that you are here, a man or a woman, hear this that the plan of God is that you want to dwell with men. How has this started working it out? It has worked it out through Christ Jesus. And when the prophets were prophesying, they were prophesying as to the kind of glory that will come through salvation by grace. And they were thinking it's for them. Peter said, oh wow. The Spirit told them eventually that it's not for them. It's for those of us at this end. And you know, by somebody deciding at any point in time that I give my heart to Jesus, the Son of Glory comes in. The Bible says Christ in you is the hope of glory. If Christ is outside of you, you are outside of glory. And maybe you are here this afternoon and you're saying, I want Christ to come into my life. The rest of my life, I want Christ to be the one dwelling inside of my heart. And I want from today the process and the transforming, the transforming power that comes through grace. I may have been committing sin every day, but today I decide that Jesus should come into my heart. I want to pray with those people. I won't, I won't do more. I'll just pray with those people. And I'll pray generally and I will hand over the money. So if you are here and you are there and you say, pray with me, I want Christ to come into my heart. I want you to lay your hand upon your heart. Just put it on your chest because you want him to come into your heart. I used your heart to represent your life. And I want you to place your hand there while I pray this prayer. And to let me know, preferably, if you are placing one hand on your heart, Raise the other one up so I can see that you are somebody there that I'm praying with. Yes, I see those hands that are raised up. All right. The Almighty God who has seen your hand has already prayed with you. Yes, I see a number of you up there. Say this after me before I pray. Lord Jesus, I have heard your word that if I'm in you, then I have the assurance of glory. I'm praying now. Say it after me. I'm praying now that Lord Jesus, you will come into my heart. And from today, let your spirit come into me and transform me from the life of being a sinner to the life of being a saint and a follower of Jesus Christ. Help me, O Lord, in Jesus' name. I am going to pray for you now. But before I pray for you, do just one thing. 
from wherever you are, move very quickly to this place. Move to the altar here. Move from there. Those of the altar, just, away. just move down here. And do it very fast because time is not. I give myself away very fast. so you and can choose me. I give myself away. I'm waiting for you. Please do it very quickly. Very, very quickly. I give myself away so you can choose me. Jesus. Now, as I'm praying on, I see you coming. Yes, come. If the, there are two remaining people, two, very quickly, if they are coming, just be putting your hands so that the prayer I'm praying now, you are part of it. There are two other people remaining, and I'm waiting for you as I'm praying on, very quickly. If you are coming, you are coming, let me see your hand put on your head as you are coming. They are among the three, the two, okay, that are coming. I see two people coming. Are you two coming? Right. Your sins, no matter what they be, be forgiven you in the name of Jesus Christ. And let today be the day that the garment of sin is pulled away from your life. And let the garment of righteousness, which is the meaning, the garment the beautiful meaning of the bride the one on each one of you right now in the name of Jesus and may your names be written in the Lamb's book of life so when the ultimate fulfillment of revelation we have just read will be fulfilled when God will dwell among his people and when the new Jerusalem will come and the tabernacle of God will be with man, you will not be missing in the name of Jesus. I hand you over to the Lord. No power, no principality. From the, anywhere, from anywhere, you have the right and the power to snatch you away from the Lord anymore. I pray this prayer. In Jesus' mighty name, I do pray. Amen.
Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, oh God, that as people of God, we will have an understanding, an understanding of the temple, the understanding of the temple, that today we are the temple of the living God, and that God dwells in us. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that as you dwell in us, help us to go forth and show forth your glory. That it may come to pass that the glory of this latter house will by every standard be more than the former, be more than that of Solomon, be more than that which is made of the gold that is in this earth. In the name of Jesus. And ultimately, I pray that everyone whose hand is up right now we will be among them that will come from heaven as the new Jerusalem that God is preparing. And you will have a place in that house which the Lord himself has got to prepare. And when God comes, he will dwell in our midst. But between now and then, I command your tears be wiped away. Amen. May your cry cease. Amen. Whatever you are crying for, I say may that cry cease in the name of Jesus. And may your pains disappear. May you have control over death as God has control over your life. And may you live your life to the fullest. And the number of your days you will fulfill. I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Let everyone that has heard this prayer say amen. Amen. That was the very powerful message. A heart touching, heart rendering, heart transforming message. We shall never forget this. Thank you so much. Our beloved Father, the of the Gospel, Gospel Church, Nigeria, we appreciate you for that powerful message. Good word, good food. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. You are blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The glory of the latter house shall be more than the former. Even in your life and in my life. Thank you. God bless you, sir. We give honor, glory, and thanks to our grace and mighty God, our Redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the blessed Holy Spirit for the success of this cathedral commissioning and dedication. Glory be to the Trinity in the highest. Amen. We also appreciate the presence of our fathers in the Lord. Pastor Professor S. Wola, the teacher of this mission, the general secretary, Pastor E. Adeoju, the AGUs, the AGS, the RPs, DPs, evangelists, and pastors present. Thank you for coming. God bless you in Jesus' name. We want to especially thank our guest speaker for today. Occasion, our Father in the Lord, the General Vice of the First Part Gospel Church, person of Pastor F. Medway. Indeed, we true honoring government invitation for this occasion. You have to open another chapter of intimate relationship with us. We say thanks you and bless you, and God bless you in Jesus' name. Likewise, all our invited guests, ministers from other churches, near and far, PF representative, if there's any. Chevy View Estates uh, resident and where which are present here today for your contributions in making this day a reality. You will not lose your reward in Jesus' name. Also want to appreciate the Golf TV crew, the medical personnel, the Chaplain. You indeed added color to, to this day. May God make your life colorful in Jesus' name. Uh, please, as we are returning to our location and location, please let's drive carefully and God will grant you joining us in the name of Jesus. This is a fitting arrangement. Uh, all our fathers in the Lord, all the DPs, ADPs, uh, they have given your package or your uh, put to the, your driver or to your PA. Please, they are there. So, all the uh, minister from legal district should go outside. Under the canopy for entertainment, why the many people remain inside? The Lagos ministers uh, should go outside for the entertainment after the benediction. Our 
and then uh, for our neighbors, we employ you to join us. Those are neighbors that are present today. We employ you to join us for our worship service from this Sunday and henceforth. We are here for you. Our presence here is because of you and for everyone around here. So on Sunday, we are looking forward to see you. And God will bless you as you come in Jesus' name. Our dedication thanksgiving also come up tomorrow, Sunday, 23rd of um, February 2014. This will come up at 10 a.m. Uh, here. And our services include, for those of us that are coming for the first time, or living around in the new area, and she will build estate. We have transpositional discipleship training by 8 a.m. in the morning. Sunday Bible school followed, and the worship service by 10 a.m. Tuesday Bible study, and on Friday we have prayer meeting in all assemblies in this district. And God will bless you as you call. Thank you for listening.
we thank you for, very much for coming. And we pray for more wisdom for all of you in the name of Jesus Christ. To all the executive members of this mission who are here, we welcome you. We thank you for coming. And we pray God blessings upon your lives and your family in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank all the ministers, the pastors, from other districts, the pastors in Lagos, the pastors that are coming from far distances. Lord will continue to bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank all our guests, the people we invited today to join us. We appreciate you are coming to grace this occasion and we pray that God will be with you always. We thank the choir, the workers, we thank the women who have been very, very strong in organizing the prayers, organizing the food, and all the entertainment. May God's blessing be upon your life all in the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, we thank every member of this mission that is here today. Today has been wonderful. And because we are all here today, great and wonderful things will continue in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. On that note, if there is anybody I have not mentioned, I think we have the press man here. We have the Go TV, Gov TV. We have everyone that is here. All of us what we call in our local dialects, Bogbo, all of us, God will bless us all. I want to hear you, amen. Amen and amen. Thank you very much. Ah, let's do the clapping because we are going to eat very soon. Some people are already eating, but we are going to wait till our time. Rise up now as we take the closing hymn for this wonderful, glorious, and uh, powerful service. And you will find that at the back of the program, page 13, page 13, as we sing the closing. If anybody is sitting down, please may you stand to join us as we sing this closing song. So God be the glory, great is He has done. So I think the word that He gave us inside. That is life and I took to see and open the life that all they go.
to their lives. In the name of Jesus. This church is a joy to this church, to this mission. We pray that many more of this we want to witness in all places in government. God, may you do this for us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. For we know that in everything, in every area, your smiles will continue on us. Blessed be your name. For in Jesus' glamorous name, we pray.